Hi everyone, welcome to Sense with Singh. Today we are going to talk about vanilla fragrances, so let's start. So vanilla is a note that we have been experiencing since our childhoods uh, in the form of cakes, in the form of ice creams and it is a note that has a certain nostalgia to it. Uh, the sweetness, the woodiness, it brings a certain comfort, certain warmth alongside it and I love it in fragrances. I'm a big vanilla fragrance lover and uh, I have been, my hunt for vanilla fragrances doesn't end. Uh, but there are some vanilla fragrances in my collection I absolutely love and adore. And I'm going to share my experience of them with you and I'm going to share those fragrances with you as well. So we're going to talk about six fragrances. So let's start with this list and the one we are starting with is called uh, Vanille Noir du Mexique and this is by Le Maison de la Vanille. Uh, this is a beautiful thing. Uh, let me just get that in focus so you can see. Yeah, there it is. It comes in this aluminum bottle and this is slightly heavy. Uh, stop. So this one is a very sweet vanilla, it uh, does not have as much of woody character. There are some floral notes supporting but it is mostly resins and vanilla. Uh, this, is, this is not that expensive a scent but it is an excellent performer. Uh, so more of a sweet resinous vanilla uh, with, this, with, with that, when, when I say sweetness there is an actual sugary sweetness that comes into this. So Vanille Noir de Mexique. Uh, moving on, the next fragrance on this list here is going to be uh, Oud Vanille by Mancera. Now Oud Vanille by Mancera has been in the game for a while. Mancera is famous for doing loud fragrances and some somewhat synthetic stuff as well. Uh, but this one right here, this is that old screw neck bottle. I really like the Mancera screw neck bottles. Uh, uh, they're good bottles. Mancera does a good job with the presentation. I'm gonna have to bring it closer to my nose. So this one is more of a woody vanilla. It has a certain woodiness to it that is given by kayak wood and a soft spiciness in there, not too resinous, the gentle sweetness coming with the woodiness and this performs very loud again so when uh, Oud Vanille by Mancera is uh, number two. Uh, the next one is Serge Luton's uh, Unbo Vanille. So Serge Luton's does intense fragrances, I love this house uh, many of their creations uh, are amongst my many tops. Uh, so Unbo Vanille also makes this list. Uh, let me just spray it up. So what is nice about here, there is a buttery coconut in there with the vanilla, some floral notes and spices, whatever. I uh, don't really care much. But <laughs> yes, the, the vanilla is with coconut in combination. Uh, it has a certain, that, that coconut brings a certain tropical freshness to the whole thing, but again, it remains more of a winter scent, uh, or you can say a fall evening kind of a scent. Uh, some might find this coconut to be slightly off-putting, reason being uh, the coconut has that, uh, the coconut uh, aroma has that oily texture, and this one is that sort of a coconut. So. I was un bois vanille. Uh, next on the list is a flanker and I have, I don't have any other bottles uh, from this lineup. So it is Le Mal Le Parfum by Jean Paul Gaultier. And this is an iconic line. This bottle is identified on its own. Uh, I have never owned any other fragrance from this line. 
uh, I, you know, the JPG Lamal and Ultramal, they all have a legendary status to them, but uh, I have never been a fan of them and uh, I never quite really enjoy those fragrances to be honest. So, Lemal Le Parfum was something of my taste. Uh, oh, no cap here. Yeah. Uh, so, this has a cardamom in the beginning with a lavender and an iris note which gives it a certain freshness fresh floral character thanks to that lavender but it's all about the vanilla and the bottom uh, it goes very well with the top composition it's a beast of a performer and a very classy scent uh, so Limal Le Parfum was there and next we are going to okay now we are going to into the top three but before I go into the top three, there is another scent that I want to introduce. Uh, it was a website exclusive that I was able to get somehow. And I feel fortunate that I did uh, because uh, it's really hard to find. And I had heard good things about it. The house has good reputation already. When this scent, when I read the name, I was like, has a vanilla lava, I have to have it. So this is, uh, this tiny bottle is Vanille Exotique and this is by, uh, right there, Katana Perfumes. Now the, this is an artisan house that does naturals and look at the juice color that is all natural stuff right there. And this was a Sealed Essence exclusive. So Sealed Essence is a website that serves uh, in US and uh, somehow I was able to get this bottle. Uh, I want to talk about it because this deserves way more attention than any other house that I've come across. And uh, well, I, the color it speaks for itself. It's all natural and it's just beautiful. So the start of this is a very sharp citrus, very sharp citrus. Uh, I've come across many citrus vanillas. Uh, there has been uh, uh, Aura Sublime, which is an ex exquisite vanilla scent. Uh, then there was uh, Vanilla and Ruby Intense, something like that, by EBK. That was purely a citrus vanilla with, you know, that very ice creamy vanilla. And another one that was a citrus vanilla was Trefle Por uh, by um, Perfume of Roma. Very nice scent again, but as a citrus vanilla, nothing compares to vanilla exotic. As sharp citrus, it does give a vanilla hint in the back. There are some florals and raisins and there's oud in there as well, all natural stuff. But when it dries down, it is completely different from the opening. And you will hear me say that again about another scent. So vanilla exotic literally the most amazing citrus vanilla scent if somehow anyone can arrange a bottle for themselves from us and they'll you like natural perfumery and you like uh, you know vanilla scents this is a must-have vanille exotique is a must-have for anyone who loves naturals and uh, you know uh, artisanal artisanal stuff let me get that in focus once again there it is beautiful juice color love wearing this in winter storm because uh, I don't want to spray that on the shirt so beautiful I know how this develops I've loved wearing the scent uh, in the season so vanille exotique okay now coming to my top three vanillas I've uh, been very vocal about it wherever I've had the chance I've introduced these I've talked about these but the number three is going to be I am very impressed by this house. The house is imaginary authors and the scent is Memoirs of a Trespasser. So Memoirs of a Trespasser is a gorgeous vanilla scent. It has Madagascar. The convenience is that the notes are right there. You can see that. <laughs> so it has uh, Madagascar vanilla, Gayak wood, benzo and resin and you know bergamot, myrrh, all that. But there is one note in here that speaks volumes in the composition is the oak barrels. You see that in the end, the oak barrels, and that is the magic of the scent. I love how they imagine a note and they add it to the composition so well that you can actually picture it while you sniff it. 
So this is a sweet woody vanilla thanks to the Gayak wood and the vanilla combination. Uh, the bergamot, I don't know how much the bergamot is acting but well, it is, there's a certain sweetness to it. But as it uh, dries, as it develops, it is more of a smoky tone that comes from the oak barrels. These are the oak barrels I imagine which are used for aging the whiskies. Uh, and I think they're smoked from within, something like that. But that is the note that I imagine that there is and there is a resinous vibe to it. This is not everyone's cup of tea. This is not a vanilla scent that everyone likes to smell, especially in the warmer weather. This is hardcore cold weather vanilla scent and it gives a very good warmth. It's a very good comfort uh, because of the smokiness. You know, it gives you that uh, cozy uh, fire, sitting next to the fire uh, kind of a feel. So, uh, Memoirs of a Trespasser, excellent smoky vanilla with, uh, with, with, um, with resinous facets. So, that's that. Uh, moving on, uh, uh, vanilla, second favorite vanilla and I am wanting to add its extra version as well as much as I've heard that the original was amazing uh, but the extra version outdoes the original and I am talking about this uh, gorgeous bottle, gorgeous presentation, very heavy cap, slightly lighter bottle but those gold flakes in the in there just they just you know they just win you over look at that if you have an atelier's there's a atelier's there's a bottle and you don't do that to it you know you don't really have it <laughs> so loon feline is uh my second favorite vanilla of all time I, I feel that the juice has gone slightly darker uh from when i bought the bottle initially uh, but this is just amazing. I love its performance as well. These gold flakes come out on your clothes and you know add that rich vibe to you. So Loon Feline, very rich, very dense vanilla, has a smoky vibe to it, some resinous uh, stuff and spiciness in there as well. The spiciness is more sweeter than being woody sharp. So. Uh, but this vanilla is sweet, it is as I said sweet, rich and dense and just amazing, just amazing, very comforting. I've had this bottle uh, for a long time now and so this is good, uh, Loonfully. Uh, the next is going to be my ultimate favorite vanilla scent ever. I was introduced to this scent by a fellow from the fragrance community, Rajiv Burad. Uh, he sent me a small vial of it and I tested it. I loved it from the first sniff. I enjoyed wearing that sample and I hold him responsible for having me, you know, spend money on this bottle. But it was totally worth it. It's totally worth it. Uh, so this is uh, Vanille by Mona Diorio. So the perfumer Mona Diorio is no longer amongst us. She passed away about, uh, about a decade ago. And she had created this gorgeous scent. I love the presentation as well. So Vanille is my all-time vanilla favorite vanilla scent, number one on my list. And I'll tell you why. So Vanille, as I said, I, uh, that it starts like something else, it develops into something else. And this is the scent that I was talking about. Now this here is a very potent, uh, in your face, sharp, spicy green start. Yes, it's a spicy green start and you don't expect that from the name. But as you tend to experience this scent more and more, you start to get the vanilla from the beginning. Uh, the spicy green part is more dominant, but as it, as you smell it, and it goes slightly away, you get the vanilla out of it. And as it progresses and the way it ends, becomes a very rich resinous vanilla, balsamic vanilla. And you're like, wait, what? What just happened? I did not apply that. You know, you get that impression in your head. No, this is not the scent that I applied, but what it has developed into 
is again fantastic. So Mona di Oreo Vanilla, it's an absolute magic of a scent. I love it. I have recommended this to many people who blind bought it and uh, one person did not like it as a blind buy and he had to sell his bottle. But the other two people and they loved it. They still have that bottle and I am very happy that they enjoyed it. Scents are a subjective thing. I like something, you don't like something, it's okay. That's how it is. And uh, But there's this scent is sharp spicy green in the beginning, develops and, and you feel how the resin is going, uh, is get, gaining more strength. Resin and vanilla are gaining more strength and the sharp spiciness from the top is settling down. So it's not, it, it, it's, it's like, you know, it goes like that. So it's a very gradual development, but it's, it definitely feels very exquisite. Uh, you feel rich, uh, you know, it gives you that sort of an aura and uh, to yourself as well. And the performance on this is just fantastic. It just, you know, uh, justifies the price tag. <laughs> right, so before we do a overview again, there are a couple things that I've, uh, I've, ex I've been told in the last three months that I haven't posted. Uh, and uh, I've been told that you talk about scents that are hard to get, that are not known, and uh, you know, things like that. And we're not able to find these scents that, that you talk about. Uh, well, that was the whole point of the channel. To, to up the scent game to who, of whosoever who's listening to me. Uh, I could easily talk about crap like Dior Sauvage, or you know many other scents that are out there which are a sure shot winner you know Aventus has been talked about a lot Aventus its clones its batch variations and so on and so forth so but I don't want to do that I'm sorry I want to introduce you to fragrances that are that are different to make you stand out in a crowd like there could be 10 people wearing Sauvage but there will be only you wearing Mona Riorio so that was my whole point. The channel has to serve a different purpose. Uh, there are many people out there who are, who, are, who, are, who are talking about scents that everybody talks about. They're just easy scents and they're easy to wear. They're mass appealing, but they lack character. They lack individuality. And that is what I am here for. So whosoever told me and the number of whosoever's told me that they have this complaint with me, I take it as a compliment so thank you so much for that and uh, if you're not able to find any of those scents talk to me I leave my Instagram below send me a message and I always respond and I will tell you where to get which scent and you know you can connect to dealers you can connect to websites and they can uh, you know connect you further to these fragrances uh, like, uh, okay, I, I know this is going to be difficult to get because this is only available with sealed essence in US. But, you know, things like uh, Mona Di Oreo, uh, Imaginary Authors is available in India through many people. Um, Mansars are easy to get. Uh, you won't have a problem finding this JPG line. No, never. Uh, even Atelier Dezo, whichever you want, even the X trade version is available. Mona Di Oreos can be arranged. So, these are the kind of perfumes I like to talk about that are lesser known to the people but are amazing perfumery. They're a work of art. So, please, let's work together on this and, you know, uh, uplift our scent game. That's, I'm, that's what I'm here for. Anyways, so coming back and talking about a review. So, Vanille uh, Noir de Mexique, a good sweet vanilla you know easy to get cheap so decent performance as well good performance rather Mansara with vanilla woody vanilla uh, you know uh, Mansara does loud scents and uh, some of them are good some of them are absolute garbage this is good this has respect in the fragrance community and it's going to be an absolute gem in the winter uh, Unbo vanilla a fresh coconut vanilla excellent Sergio Lutons is a house that deserves a lot more respect and uh, they're not that expensive scents as well, just so you know. Uh, Imaginary Authors is one of the most boldly creative houses that I've experienced. I've experienced all their creations. That is just fantastic work. I mean, just amazing. 
so memoirs of a trespasser uh, then we had this jpg is amazing uh, you know soft spices florals and uh, vanilla in there has a sort of a musky undertone to it beast of a performer worth getting the 125 mil bottle this is worth getting and in the winters this is going to be amazing again and this does really well in the summers too so that and uh, then we talk about katana perfumes let's see how vanilla exotic and uh, see the already the creaminess of the vanilla and the softness has started to come up and the sharp citrus from the top has started to settle down so this is an amazing scent i wish uh, somehow people could experience this and know how great artistic perfume we could be a national artist perfume then lune feline lune feline is a gem of a scent it is classy it is cozy and that presentation is uh, you know on its own level this is uh, the cap is heavier in proportion to the bottle so sometimes it actually topples over <laughs> but that's well that's handling is something else but lune feline uh, my second favorite vanilla of all time and uh, then you have Monari Oreo with a vanille. Um, even their other scents are just very well executed. The quality of these scents is amazing. So this is a scent that I have, I was introduced to by someone else and I loved it. And I ended up getting a bottle of it, so it was worth it. So these were some vanilla recommendations. There will be more recommendations coming for the winter season in particular. And we're starting with this, uh, with vanilla, because uh, you can start with vanilla scents now. And the next uh, couple of videos will cover scents which will be suitable for colder winters. And we in the northern part of India experience very cold winters. And those scents are not only relevant, but excellent performers in winters as well. So stay tuned for that and a couple of videos will be following soon after. And please, uh, if there's any queries or anything, let me know in the comments. Uh, if there's a scent that you would like me to review, let me know in the comments. If there's anything I can help you with, send me a DM on Instagram. Uh, I'll leave the link. And uh, I think that's it for, from me uh, for this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.